my doctor won't come on because he's afraid of being banned and called all kinds of names and he's just a you know just a regular doctor but the advice that he got he got it from Dr. Richard Bartlett. Um, R Richard Bartlett is a guy that you, if you live in Texas, you may know. Uh, Rick Perry appointed him to the newly formed Texas Health Disparities Task Force, uh, and it was an advisory body, uh, blah, 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 blah. He was also asked to remain on the task force for seven years, received a meritorious service award from the Texas Department of Health and Human Services. His peers have elected him to serve as as the County Medical uh, Society president for four consecutive terms. He served for 20 years at the local CBS uh, medical expert. I mean, the guy is well known uh, and well credentialed. I don't know what they're going to do to him uh, now because he says that he has found something that he thinks everyone should try if you have uh, a um, the symptoms of, of COVID. So I wanted to give you what I was taking, and I wanted to talk to uh, Dr. Bartlett. So if you are feeling anything uh, like it's coming on, you can ask your doctor about this. Welcome, Dr. Bartlett. How are you? Glenn, I'm doing great. Thanks. I'm honored to be with you. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for the uh, kind consultations and advice uh, that I know you've uh, given my doctor. Um, uh, is it possible that, uh, with everybody in my family, I mean, I've got immune disorder, everything else. I should have been the first one to get it. Um, but as soon as, as soon as anybody in the family started to get things and I started to feel, uh, down at all, I started the flight of medication that you have recommended and I didn't get it. Is it possible that I was going to get COVID and didn't because of this? Or well, not? The bottom, bottom line, Glenn, is that uh, the testing has false negatives and false positives that have been proven over and over. And uh, I've had personal experiences of taking care of patients who initially test negative, and I'm treating them, and they're getting better. And then later they get a, a test after being treated for 11 days, and their 90% of their symptoms are gone, and it's positive. Well, they they probably had it all along, and we're seeing this over and over again where three people in the family have the same symptoms that started at the same time, two test positive, one test negative. They all have mm. it. Uh, it, it. Symptomatology is what is the term where you look at the big picture. You, you, you use common sense. You use med good medical judgment with your training, and, and you treat the patient. You don't treat the test. Treating the right. test is killing people. But I want to tell you, uh, this strategy that came to me was, a, was when I was looking for a stopgap measure that would help me save someone's life as an emergency room doctor, because I also work in the emergency room. And back in March, uh, we were told there was nothing to do. Wait until they have severe symptoms. As a matter of fact, they should not be helped at all if they have mild to moderate symptoms. Wait until they have severe symptoms. So me being an ER doctor, and thinking, what am I going to do if someone comes in the emergency room with, the, with their loved ones and they say, I can't breathe? Because this is a respiratory inflammatory disease, COVID is, that causes people to have trouble breathing. And breathing is really important. I teach <laughs> advanced trauma. You know, that seems intuitive, but people seem, you have uh, leaders right now, I don't know how they became leaders, but they're talking about waves and curves how about medicine science facts airway breathing circulation the abcs of cpr of advanced trauma life support of advanced cardiac life support breathing is fundamental and uh, when someone can't breathe this is what they look like they many times their lips are blue you can see the panic in their eyes you hear the panic in their voice they might be confused because they're low on oxygen and um some people can tolerate that better than others, but we know that the comorbidities that are having trouble with COVID and dying are the people who have, uh, they have diabetes, they have, uh, they've smoked for 50 years, uh, they have a heart disease, and so they, their reserve and being able to handle low oxygen is less than someone else, and the, and the danger is they could die. And so uh, besides that, 
it's not just an inconvenience. What about empathy? What about alleviating human suffering? There's a place for that still in medicine. And just as a human, we don't want to see other humans suffer. But uh, there are some common sense, practical, pr proven uh, medical things that we can do. And so we know this is an inflammatory disease. How about an anti-inflammatory medicine? It's a respiratory problem in the lungs is where the inflammation is. How about putting the anti-inflammatory medicine to the source of the problem in the lungs with a inhaled, neb uh, inhaled steroid, a, a nebulizer treatment of budesonide, which has been out for 25 years, which is being used by millions of Americans every day that are healthy to protect them from getting sick. And so that was a strategy that I've been using, and it's working. So the bucetonide is, is something that you looked at and said, why are we giving steroids in a tablet form? We should be, we should be getting that steroid directly into the lungs. Uh, and it is, if you get it early enough, it stops the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the cytokine uh, storms that happen, because uh, we know that that is a big problem with this the the our immune system goes into a storm and then it just spirals out of control so if you're yeah. saying wait 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 you you're in the middle of the storm so this logic of waiting until someone is in distress and then helping them has never been employed successfully in american healthcare forever we don't use that against the top 3 killers heart attack stroke and cancer Let's just say if someone called 911 and they said, I have slurred speech and I'm 65 years old and um, I have smoked for 50 years and all my family has strokes, you won't have the 911 dispatcher say, well, maybe you're overtired. Call us when you have severe symptoms. That's ridiculous. And I would never recommend that. That's bad medicine. But with this disease, we have a situation where the strategy that's been pushed on the American public is if you have mild to moderate symptoms, wait until you've got severe symptoms uh, and then seek help. But, you know, even when people have severe symptoms, because by and large people comply with what they're told, they have severe symptoms, they're short of breath, they go to the emergency room, and many times they're told, uh, take Tylenol, you, yes, you tested positive, and yes, you feel miserable, but you're not sick enough yet go home, take Tylenol, and tough it out. And when you get sicker, come back. That would be like uh, a real situation that I took care of, a one-year-old who swallowed a quarter. And the family brought the kid to the ER where I was working. I'm the one. And the, the child is not in immediate distress. But on the x-ray, I see a quarter uh, lodged in the throat. I could. This, this is how ridiculous things have gotten. I, it would be like you don't give a one-year-old Tylenol they can't swallow. It would be like me handing them a blankie uh, with, a, with a little unicorn on it and saying, take this child home, wrap it in the blankie, and sing its favorite song and keep it comfortable until you have severe symptoms. It's ridiculous logic. Uh, we need to take care of people early and, and avoid uh, the things that are even more dangerous, like intubating a patient which can so what, and put them on a ventilator. What are you seeing as far as results on this? Oh, uh, oh if you catch this early, I'm having, uh, you can, I have one patient who, uh, with the first treatment, that's the only treatment he needed because it was within hours of his fever, chills, body aches. Uh, he had just been on a plane with, with another person behind him that was COVID positive and he was concerned and, and rightfully so, it, it turned out to be COVID, but one breathing treatment stopped all the symptoms. And I've had other patients who were sick for, well, one patient that has uh, two kinds of lymphoma, cancer in the blood. She just received radiation a month before and she's on chemotherapy currently for the mm. cancer. And for five days, she was flat on, on her back in bed with a nonstop fever, couldn't sleep. And she calls me on a Friday, says, my granddaughter tested positive. I heard you on the radio. Would you please help me? And so on that Friday, I call in the breathing treatments and the medicine. She takes her first treatment, sleeps all night long for the first time in five days. She's, her fever breaks. Over the weekend, she recovers. She's able to teach an eight-hour day 
of music lessons via Skype to her kids on Monday. And then she tests negative uh, twice after having becoming symptom free. And so that's what I see. The people are telling me many times, I hear it very often, while they're getting their breathing treatment with budesonide, many times they tell me, my chest pain is going away. My shortness of breath is going away during the treatment. I feel much better right after the treatment. And this is not a medicine that I invented. I'm not looking for new, do- new patients. I'm not making any money off of this. This costs $3 for a breathing treatment. It's something you can, I recommend be- people being treated early in every disease, including this life-threatening pandemic with a medicine that's cheap, cost-effective. They can sit on their couch, watch Netflix, uh, and uh, for five minutes get a breathing treatment and get relief from their shortness of breath and chest pain. That seems like a good idea. It made all the difference to Tanya, I know. Um, she was. She would say that. She would take the breathing treatment. She'd say, oh, my gosh, I feel so much better. Uh, and she took it, I don't remember for how many days, but she took it for several days. Uh, and it dramatically improved uh, her breathing. Uh, And like I said, I started it the minute I started feeling any kind of symptoms. And I did it for three days, I think as well, four days. And I haven't had, I haven't had any problems at all. I mean, it's been really, really miraculous. Uh